A lot's changed over the last few years when it comes to SSDs, so let's jump into it and get you installing your SSD the right way. The two main types of M.2 SSDs are SATA and NVMe. NVMe transfers data through the PCI Express interface. That's the same thing your graphics card uses, and it's super fast. The SATA interface is much slower, so any drive based on this technology is going to be quite a bit slower than NVMe. SATA SSDs are still being used though because of their low cost per gigabyte, but their popularity is fading because they're a lot slower and the price of NVMe SSDs has been coming down over the years. We're now seeing motherboard releases without SATA M.2 support. That means you have to know what your motherboard can support before you pick an SSD. And to complicate things further, your SSD performance and even your graphics card can be limited by your motherboard board depending on how many drives you have and where you install them. Take this motherboard for example. It's a modern x870 board built around the AM5 socket with support for AMD Ryzen 7, 8, and 9000 series CPUs. Sounds pretty good. Now look at this. Assuming you're using a Ryzen 9000 series CPU, M.2 slot number 1 supports PCIe 5.0 x4, and so does M.2 slot number 2, and they're connected directly to the CPU for maximum performance. That's where PCIe Gen 5 NVMe drives need to be installed to be able to hit their rated speeds, but Look at this. When there's a drive installed in slot number two, your graphics card will be capped at 8x mode instead of 16x because the bandwidth is shared between the main PCIe x16 slot and M.2 slot number two. So you can see how something as simple as plugging in an SSD can have an effect on the performance of an entirely different component in your system. The other two M.2 slots on here, numbers three and four, support PCIe 4.0 times four, and they're connected through the X870 chipset rather than directly to the CPU. All this can definitely be confusing, so I recommend pulling up your motherboard manual just to double check everything when you're installing drives, otherwise you could end up wasting performance that you paid for. The SSD I'm installing is the Crucial T705. This is the two terabyte model. And if you're wondering why it looks kind of dirty, it's because it is. There's a little thermal grease left on there from when I was testing it. So this is a 2280 type, which means it's 22 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters long. And this is the most common type of SSD and motherboards usually come ready for this size by default. And notice it has memory chips, not just on the front here, but also on the back as well. This is what we call a double-sided SSD. Remember that because it's gonna come up again when we install it. Now, because this is a PCIe Gen 5 SSD, I wanna make sure I'm installing it into M.2 slot number one on this board because I know that's where I'm gonna get the full PCIe 5.0 bandwidth that this drive needs without limiting my graphics card. If you're installing on an existing or an already built PC, make sure you shut the system down and disconnect the power before you start handling any components. If you have a heatsink covering the installation slots, go ahead and remove it. Some boards have quick release features like this one, and others just have some screws that you need to take out. And some other boards use these big metal heatsink shields to cover multiple slots and connectors. Depending on your board and where you're installing your SSD, you might have to remove a few different panels. When you remove the heatsink, notice there's a little thermal pad on the back there. That's there to make contact with the top of your SSD to be able to transfer heat away from it. Just put your heatsinks and panels aside for now, and I'll show you what to do with those after we get the drive installed. This board has a toolless mounting system that uses clips to hold down the drives instead of screws. If your board doesn't have one of these, you'll just need to use a screw at the end there. Motherboards usually come with the screws for SSDs. If you need one, take a look at your accessories that came in your motherboard box and you should be able to find M.2 screws somewhere in there. Another thing to pay attention to is the M.2 supports. That's these little rubber pad things here. Which ones you use matters depending on whether you have a single or double-sided SSD. By default, this board comes equipped with pads for double-sided SSDs, so there's nothing for me to do here. But if I was gonna install a single-sided SSD, I could add one of these extra pads on there to raise it up so the drive gets a little bit of support. And these pads come with the motherboard, by the way. Check your manual before you do this because if you set the wrong support height, it can actually cause your SSD to bend over time. Now, if we look at the end of the SSD where the connector is, you'll see that it's keyed. That means it can only go in one way. So all we have to do is take the drive and insert the keyed end into the M.2 connector at about a 30 degree angle. And you might have to wiggle it back and forth a tiny bit to get it to slide in. And it's supposed to be sticking up like this. It's the screw, or in this case, the locking clip that holds it down against the motherboard. Now all I have to do is press the drive down and make sure that little clip snaps into place at the back of the SSD. If you have to screw yours down, here's what that looks like. It's doing the exact same thing, just takes a little extra time. 
Now that our drive's installed, we can take the heat sink that we removed from the motherboard and get it reinstalled. But before you put this back on, check the thermal pad on the back to see if there's a protective plastic film on it. You've got to remove that to expose the thermal pad. It needs to make direct contact with the top of your SSD to work properly. And don't worry about the label sticker on your SSD, that can stay right where it is. That's it for the hardware installation, but there's still a few more steps to make sure everything's working properly. When you turn on your PC, press the delete key during the startup sequence to go into the system BIOS. You should have a section somewhere for storage devices where your newly installed drive should show up. If it's not there, double check your settings to make sure PCIe support is enabled for NVMe drives. If you see that it's disabled, change it to enabled, press F10 to save the changes, and then boot into Windows or start your Windows installation process if this is a new PC. If you do see your drive there, that's perfect. You can just press escape, get out of the system BIOS, and boot into Windows. Now if you're installing your drive into a brand new build that's going to be running Windows, you'll be able to initialize and format it during the Windows installation process. But if this is a secondary drive on a PC that's already running Windows on another drive, then you're going to need to do those steps manually before you can use it. From the Windows desktop, click on the start menu and type disk management. Click on create and format hard disk partitions. This screen shows you all the drives and partitions in your system. Anything in blue is already up and running and anything in black that's labeled unallocated is a new drive. So that right there is the brand new two terabyte drive that I just installed. So the first step is we're gonna right click on the unallocated drive and select new simple volume. That brings us to this window where we're gonna pick the settings for our new drive. This is asking us how much disk space we wanna use and we wanna be able to use the entire drive. So the new simple volume size in megabytes should be equal to the maximum disk space available in megabytes. By default, it should already be set up like this, but if it's not, just make sure the numbers match. Next, we have to assign a drive letter. You can click the drop down menu here and pick whatever letter you want to assign to this drive and then click next. This part's asking us to confirm the format settings. For the file system, we want NTFS. We can leave the allocation unit size default and we can enter a volume label to make it easier to organize our files. So for example, if I want this to be for video production, I can just type that in here. And quick format is fine, so we're just gonna leave that checked and click next. This is a final summary of all the settings we picked. You can review everything to make sure you're happy with it. If you wanna go back and change anything, you can click the back button. And when you're satisfied, click finish and the computer will perform the format. As soon as it's done, you should see the previously unallocated space is now set up as your new drive. And if we open up a file explorer window, we can see the drive right here with all the other drives installed in the system. I can now click on it and start transferring my files over, installing apps or whatever else I want to do with it. If you want to quickly check and make sure you didn't make a mistake and limit your graphics card, you can download a free program called CPU ID. I'll link it for you down in the description. If you run that and go over to the motherboard tab, it's going to show you your PCI Express version and the link width. So you can see I have the maximum PCIe 5.0 times 16 bandwidth, even with our SSD installed. And if we run a speed test on the SSD, we can see the main sequential read and write numbers match the advertised speed for this drive. One final note, if you're installing older drives into a newer motherboard, for example, maybe you wanna put a Gen 4 SSD in a Gen 5 slot, it's perfectly fine, everything's backwards compatible, and the Gen 4 SSD in that case is just gonna run at the rated Gen 4 speeds. I'll have some links for you for all the software utilities that I use down in the description, along with some shopping links if you wanna buy some new drives or other hardware. Give the video a thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Happy PC building.